Welcome to the 2024 F1 Hungarian Grand Prix reaction. I'm Sagan, and I'm joined in once again by Captain EJX. <laughs> oh yeah, yeah, that's pretty, pretty, pretty much a good assumption, uh, good, like, uh, yeah, <laughs> just spent the entire entire weekend <laughs> just one sentence. Yeah, pretty much. Uh, at the at the at the end of the race, I pretty much said like, this was such a boring race, but it was like one hundred percent drama and zero percent racing. <laughs> Literally. <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> I mean, drama isn't bad, but if if it makes like of all the excitement, it's kind of losing the feel or the the vibe. I don't know how to say it. Um, I just wasn't very very satisfied with this Grand Prix in terms of fun. Um, even even the very big fun nice thing that I was really excited about uh, coming to the race. Oh, oh, um, it's just the race, but during the race, got screwed by a certain team, and I'm gonna talk about that quite a bit later on. Obviously, as we will. Uh, yeah, I guess we can get to the weekend. Um, there were there was just only one announcement that Kevin Magnussen is leaving Haas at the end of the year, so a potentially extra rule prediction point for me. I don't know. Uh, Potentially, uh, if you if if you accept it, obviously Oli Berman just got announced uh, today uh, for uh, no, uh, that was Esteban Ocon got announced for Haas today as well. So as as a teammate, uh, wasn't quite in the range that I uh, I expressed when I made made the predictions, but kind of oh, okay. <laughs> okay, apart from that, not really any news. Just just all the usual stuff. So, uh, the weekend, it was supposed to be extremely hot, as it was on Friday. Uh, drivers burning through their tires a lot, and uh, just not firing too much grip. Um, it looked very interesting uh, in Friday. We, at one point, we had Ferrari at the top, and we had Mercedes at the top, and uh, in qualifying, <laughs> the, the other way around, so uh, interesting. Yeah. Um, yeah, we can get to go right into the qualifying. Um, and I'm gonna let you carry this one. <laughs> Was it? <laughs> oh my god. <laughs> Yeah, yeah, definitely was as uh, yeah. Unfortunately, Mercedes underfield him, and we didn't expect it to be that uh, that much of a track evolution, I assume, or they just made a mistake. Um, not really the great call by Mercedes, but you know, 
these things happen for every single team. We don't have a flawless team this season. Every team has made some some mistakes, some more than others. Um, yeah, this time Mercedes just just wasn't perfect in qualifying overall. Just not their greatest qualifying, uh, especially after they won the last two races. They, uh, they were on a high, definitely. But uh, when, he, when he says Sergio Perez, yeah, he crashed it. 10 minutes into the qualifying session. <laughs> it was, I was not surprised at all. I kind of expected it as, a, like, I don't know how, but I actually saw, I actually thought, like, yeah, Perez is probably going to crash or get on the QY. Like, a few seconds later after that, <laughs> he was in the wall. Like, that was, that was interesting. Uh, <laughs> Yeah, uh, another greatest thing when you need the last two races to save your seat, and there's only one race left, Spa. That's that's not the greatest track for Sergio either. Um, obviously, um, yeah. <laughs> A little least impressive. Uh, gas or DNF, so, uh... <laughs> <laughs> True that, true that. Fortunately, I, I think your, your team was a little bit less impressive than mine. Uh, I'll get to that later, obviously. Um, Q2. Um, any big shocks there? I don't think there were. Oh, yeah, yeah. Yeah, it was, it was extremely lucky to get through to Q3 with, like, Hulkenberg and Ricardo right behind him. Or actually, Ricardo going to Q3, I think. Uh, in his final run, so good for him. Uh, Hamilton escaped to the Q3 just well, like less than half a tenth. Like, there were two drivers behind him. I, I think one of them was Wolkenberg, so um, yeah, uh, <laughs> unfortunate for uh, for my Nico. Uh, anyway, it's Q3, uh, with the well, the most exciting part of the entire qualifying up until the final few minutes, which were very anticlimactic. Yeah, quite, quite an unusual one. Yeah. 
Yeah. <laughs> yeah, yeah. That's uh like all the all the stress and uh like the tension that was there because of the rain, like constant threat of rain, like rain in five minutes, rain in ten minutes or whatever. We 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 were kept getting those messages and just never really started to rain heavily. Like I'm pretty sure there was there was a lot of rain on the on the track, not not quite enough to uh slow down slow down the times enough. Um, and yeah, it was just, it was just a good qualifying, uh, fortunately with the anticlimactic ending with Yuki crashing two minutes, um, uh, before the end of the session and yeah, the only driver who managed to improve his lap time was actually Daniel Ricard, <laughs> who only jumped his teammate. Um, so, uh, a rare, yeah, a rare W for uh, Daniel there, um, but yeah, no other driver really improved. Only like four drivers actually got to set a lap time. I think is Piastri was uh, Piastri was defending that one two pretty pretty well in the pit lane. Like, he was not speeding for it. It was just yeah, um, I got time. <laughs> yeah, the McLaren secured the one two with Lana was on pole position. So that's no points for us here. And P3. P3 Max Verstappen. <laughs> yeah, both of us get points. Uh, it's good for you because uh, I don't get points, points over here. But, uh, I, yeah. Yeah, exactly. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah, imagine, imagine if I would actually pit someone else because I wouldn't pit, want to pick this some uh, the ex exact same as you. So, yeah, luckily I did put Max there and got a point. Uh, or should I say I didn't lose a point? Okay, uh, P four was somehow Carlos Sainz getting a P four in a Ferrari. Uh, it was a it's a pretty quite under the radar goal point from Carlos. He he put like two tenths of a second on Charles as well. Uh, P4 and a Ferrari. I think that was a pretty good goal point from Carlos there. Yeah, I mean, practice one was like the only, only sign of hope for Ferrari. But after that, we just that was practice one. But <laughs> yeah, if it was like practice championship, Mercedes would be like the best team or championship winners for the last two years as well. Like, so uh, yeah, practice are never that indicative as well. We had show in P five, I think. So yeah. Uh, it, it, it can get what they're saying. Yeah, yeah, definitely. Uh, Ferrari continues to struggle compared to the other three top teams. As as yeah, they I think they've lost their beating the constructors this weekend. Pretty sure. Uh, McLaren. <laughs> oh, that's that's more on a a certain Mexican driver. <laughs> uh, Oh yeah, I mean both. The entire team had a play in it technically, but yeah, you know, we get to that obviously for the Grand Prix. Uh, P five, a uh, quick mention: uh, Lewis Hamilton getting the P five after almost getting knocked out in in Q two and losing his team in the Q one. So a pretty decent qualifying from Lewis there. Um, yeah, good position to start a Grand Prix for uh, for Sunday as he showed that for the start obviously. Okay, no points there. Um, and after that, not really much to mention. Both Astons, I think, got into into Q3, and Stroll actually got like P7. So uh, good qualifying from Astons. Unfortunately, they didn't quite uh, manage to <laughs> carry that pace over to the Grand Prix, which sucks for me because I got a most impressive team. I was quite happy for after qualifying, but you know, things happen. Unfortunately, 
Yeah, yeah, unfortunately. Okay, uh, Grand Prix. Grand Prix, we line up with a McLaren 1 2. Matt. Yeah, probably. Yeah, Max starting behind two McLarens. Lights out. <laughs> uh, uh, I don't remember. I'm uh, not quite sure. Uh, yeah. Uh, I mean, we didn't really get much, much footage from that overtaking they did. Um, so <laughs> we didn't even get that, uh, partially because there was so much team radio and yeah, uh, <laughs> a lot of it. <laughs> To be fair, at the start of the like at the start of the race after the whole incident happened, I was like, "Yeah, Max definitely has to see this position." But yeah, also on the other hand, like, where does Max go at that point? I mean, obviously he knows it's on the outside, so he will probably get forced off. But also, he doesn't really know where to go at that point. So he just straight straight up went on. Unfortunately, he was behind Norris uh, at the apex, so had to see the position. Uh, because his team told him to. Obviously, Max was definitely not happy after that. Because uh, after Norris, uh, well, not like overtook him, but it was let past by uh, Max. Couldn't really keep up with the McLarens after that. Actually, but actually, yeah. Yeah, very unusual to see, definitely. With the McLaren uh, at the front, PS3 was actually ahead of Norris. Um, I think like 90% of of the entire like uh, viewership thought that Lana will eventually overtake him because of tire deck and PS3 style management, as we saw last year, for example. Uh, but no, PS3 was actually pulling a gap out of Lando uh, in the first half of the race. It was very impressive from, uh, from him. And 
Max was actually not able to keep up with them. He was actually threatened by Lewis at, at one point. And obviously, Lewis pitted at first uh, from the front, uh, from the whole front back, uh, causing a chain reaction with the McLarens. But Max, for some reason, didn't pit. I don't know why. Like, what the point? What, what was that point? Like, Anarka is so strong in terms of the tire drag that, that was on this track, obviously. And I just... It made no sense at that point. Uh, they would gain nothing, especially uh, with what the tire, what tire sets they had left. They wouldn't really gain anything from staying out uh, unless there was a safety car or whatever. And they just stayed out a couple of laps. As laps went on, the gap showing between uh, him and uh, the cars behind it just eventually pitted and uh, pitted uh, quite a way behind Lewis as well. Um, I think it, did they overtake him by Charles in, the, in that pit stop, first pit stop pace? I think he didn't, right? Or did he? His... I think I think he yeah I I think he got opportunity game. and it, yeah 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 Charles overtake him overtake him in the pit stops uh, in the in the, in the second round of pit stops uh, the the controversial ones obviously um, yeah Max wasn't able to overtake Lewis <laughs> for. A, Good amount of laps. Uh, I was getting frustrated over the radio. Uh, some weird uh, overtake attempts. Uh, wherever he actually almost overtook a Lewis. I think that was turn two. Like he, he went around the outside, but actually went off. And Lewis just retook the position because he could manage to stay on track. And <laughs> yeah, the team radio of Red Bull. Uh, I mean, his engineer uh, Jean Piero and and Max was. Interesting to say the least. Um, basically, Max winding the entire race, <laughs> and his engineer just, uh, yeah, yep, ended up with uh, with his engineer calling him childish and whatever. Uh, they're definitely not the usual thing to see. Obviously, after Max, that's dominated the last one and a half years. Uh, we're not quite used to these kind of situations and I don't know if Red Bull are able to like have from this because this literally might be the turning point uh in, in the entire Red Bull situation and might get Mercedes to uh sorry uh Max and Mercedes like actually Yeah, yeah, definitely. That's not say a lot. And yeah, but the uh, yeah, <laughs> there's yeah. Yeah, it was uh, it was a lot of the uh, radio messages. Uh, well, the final incident, which um, well, the his race the result of them. Um, he was so angry at, at the entire situation that he just sent it down inside of Lewis, uh, locking up. Lewis didn't anticipate his lockup, turned into the corner, which he was supposed to, and Max just went like straight into. Well, um, uh, I don't know how to call it. It was it was a weird jump that the car made. It landed so heavily underground it still was intact like how how did that car not break that was that was super weird but yeah he yeah, yeah. definitely go on Like, I don't understand. I'm not aware of the rules. Well, if 
huge album meant to stay on the racing line as a as a carbon tin flag. Like it did just sit, I know it's a strike, but it did just sit on the racing line. And I, and, and I wasn't able to overtake it. Max had to overtake it. And Connell from start to take it to four. So he had Max to be able to go into the lead. So I just saw that situation probably dealt with a lot better if uh, if the last start had been on. Uh, yeah, got a point there. Uh, I just, I don't know. Um, I don't quite know the interpretation of the rules there. Um, I think, it, yeah. Yeah. Yep. Yep. Max eventually ended up in P5 behind Charles. Um, actually, at one point it looked like Carlos could actually overtake him, but yeah, the Red Bull speed kicked in and Max was just too furious to finish P6 <laughs> at that point. Uh, so he just stayed like radio silent towards the end. And <laughs> the radio messages, even after the race, were interesting. Uh, mostly for those who heard them. Uh, <laughs> Some interesting phrases, and even after a race, like in the in the media pan and so on, like uh, yeah, Max was was not cooling down at a point <laughs> for that incident. Um, no, in my opinion, I, I, I'm not quite sure. I, obviously, Max is more on the fault, but still more of a racing incident for me because I still think Lewis could have avoided the crash if he really wanted to but also, also it's not on him to anticipate a, such a ridiculous dive bomb in such a such speed that he had pretty, pretty much no time to react at that point and yeah unfortunately i, I think this this was more of a racing incident with max among the fold so i would i would get it if max would get a penalty but also would understand if he didn't and if he didn't so um i I'm, i think i'm okay with that and do you feel different? Because otherwise, he's just going to keep doing it. You've got to play it with care. Uh, you know, we talk a lot about this. That's just the policy. So you get like, the rules very slowly. Yeah. 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 Definitely. Uh, uh, I I remember that one radio when Max just said that uh, you're not allowed to now we're allowed to uh, run people off track. Like, I, I was actually I was actually laughing at that point because bro Max, you're the CEO of running people off track. <laughs> you're complaining about it. Like yeah, that was that was fun. But yeah, that's pretty much Max's weekend summed up. Um, uh, we got got to the to the other drama uh, that occurred at the front of the field. <sighs> what? My, uh, only can describe the situation in, in one word why like it was so unnecessary the entire situation with the mclarens and I, 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 to, to this moment I, I don't know that's that's bs literally like complete nonsense <laughs> yeah, when when Lando when, when Lando came came for the pit stall, it was like it was like six seconds ahead of Lewis. Like he was nowhere near him. Like wh who are you covering? And why are you pinning Oscar two laps later? Like even, uh, one lap, I would understand. Like yeah, they were maybe get close to each other. Lando would maybe get ahead. Like they would tell tell him straight away, get let Oscar through, and then you're free to race. But they didn't. They they let Oscar cruise another lap on those those uh, old tires, and Lando, uh, sorry, uh, Oscar came outside uh, from the pits, 
three seconds behind Lando, like something like that. Like, and then you're telling Lando to let Oscar through. Like, they put their own drivers in such a bad position. It's like, that's so. I would legit. I'm so angry at McLaren. This 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 all entire situ situation is just ridiculous and stupid. I I don't know what to say. It's, why 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 did it need to happen? Uh, It was just so so unnecessary. Uh, yeah, I, I um, Oscar the PS3 won the Grand Prix. Um, I, I should be like super super happy. Is yeah. Instead, I'm I'm like angry at the team, and I just don't understand. Like at that point, I was. I would even understand if Lana would not see the position because he literally the team put him in that position. He's second in the championship, and I would completely get if he would actually like not let Piastri through. Like completely understandable, but he eventually did it because McLaren just kept playing on his feelings, and it was it was awful. Like even the team radius between Lana and the team, uh, th those are so awful. Uh, how? How do you script such a such a situation that you're comfortable in P1 and P2 and you make the most uh, like unenjoyable one to finish in the history of sport? <laughs> like th that's ridiculous. Maybe the one with like Barakel left Schumacher uh, at the last turn, or uh, but maybe the one. The most unenjoyable in the recent history, let's say like that. Like, yeah. I should be so damn happy because I actually PS3 is my second favorite driver. He just won his first Grand Prix. I was like, yeah, what? Uh, why McLaren? What? What just happened? Uh, they, they, Yeah, they just basically screwed both drivers and made them both uncomfortable with the entire thing. Like that was the that was the like the least excited first driver victory uh, a first victory for a driver that i've ever seen like sort of team radio they actually s apologized for winning a race like how are you making that mclaren uh, how how are you screwing that up I i'm just so furious I'm, uh, this is such a joke of a team i, I honestly I, I i don't know i don't know i'm i'm just so so mad i, I can't speak Normally, I just like both drivers get screwed by 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 the team there, and just just very very bad, and they they will not get through this so easily. I, I don't think so. Like, Okay. 
I guess we can just run for the race order as we've pretty much uh, mentioned all of the all big drama and stuff. Um, other than the top five, actually, obviously we don't get any points for um, Perez managed to get to P7 from his uh, whatever P15 or P16 starting spot. I can't remember. Uh, and Russell to P8, uh, starting right behind him, finishing right behind Perez as well. Um, Okay, recovered drafts, nothing special from them. They just finished where they were meant to finish, I think. Uh, behind them, Yuki, P9. Uh, good drive from Yuki, especially after that crash and quality must have hurt his confidence. But he bounced back brilliantly on P10 uh, for, I think, Stroll, who didn't didn't let, let Fernando through uh, as he was meant to. Well, he was told by the team that they're going to switch, and if Lance, uh, if Lance cannot overtake Yuki, they're going to switch back, but Lance didn't let Fernando through. And it was one really bad weekend for Fernando. Even uh, in qualifying, he got screwed when he was mistaken for an Apex GP car or whatever. <laughs> it was it was stopped because because they mistaken him because uh, of the the wrong car. It was, it was a completely ridiculous situation. It's it's better explained on Twitter. I, I it was, just, uh, it, was uh, it was weird. Um, other than that, no, no many notable mentions. Uh, I think. Um, was it Daniel got P twelve with one of, the, one of the worst strategies I've ever seen, probably. But yeah, um, it's like the average Ferrari strategy, but for uh, for uh, for them, um, it almost seemed like they used the Ricardo to. Uh, assess Snowda strategy. <laughs> it looked very, very strange. Basically, he made one additional pit stop and put it into the track the traffic for no reason. Potentially costing him points and maybe in the long run costing him the Red Bull seat. We'll never know. Uh, obviously, sums up all the all the things. Um, uh, just yep, uh, will matter in the future in the end. Um, but from there, yeah, I think that's the race order. Not really much to mention. There was a gas DNF in the second race in a row. <laughs> uh, bad luck, but yeah. Um, yeah, that's about it for... Yeah. Uh, first of... Yeah, I, I wanted to mention that. <laughs> it's somehow, somehow the fastest lap point, which I'm happy about. Uh, uh, it's a pretty random point, but I'll take it. Uh, Lazy Impressive team. Um, there are some good mentions. Um, McLaren could be mentioned, but they're going to want to anyway. So uh, I don't think they're. I don't think they're eligible, even though they really, really pissed me off. Uh, Red Bull is a good, good pick. Um, they had a really bad weekend overall for both of their, their drivers, and they were not even that quick. And the strategy was just bad. So. Yeah, Red Bull could be mentioned. Has after those two P6 finishes, Hulkenberg didn't make it to Q3 and finished like 13th or 14th, nowhere near the points. Um, could be a solid pick, but I think Alpine takes it, unfortunately for me. Because, uh, like, yeah, you pretty much can get, get worse than that. Like, finish it only ahead of Joe uh, and the other car DNFs. Like, yeah, pretty, pretty much sums up the, the average Alpine weekend. And unfortunately, I think that they were the least impressive. Uh, so, yeah. Um, yeah. You got a point that you equal me. Or so it's two to two. Least impressive driver. Um, who would you give this to? Uh, I, don't, I don't really know. Yeah. There's a lot of contenders, but also not a lot of contenders. Yeah, I was I was actually impressed by Perez, so I don't think that's. Uh... Thank you. 
I mean, a uh, solid point. Uh, Max is definitely a, a big shout for for the least impressive driver. Um, definitely, that was one of his worst weekends as a driver in a while. Um, Yeah, they're probably not giving me the point for whole camera, right? <laughs> okay, okay. <laughs> That's Magnuson. I mean, what did you expect Magnuson to finish out of whole camera? Really? That's not happening. It's like Sergeant beating Alban. <laughs> Okay, my most impressive team, uh, Aston screwed me over with their strategy and their entire weekend, uh, well, Grand Prix, and uh, Mercedes definitely one of their weakest weekends in operationally. Um, in, in the Grand Prix, they were all right, but yeah. Uh, <laughs> I mean, uh, either way, we don't get a point. I, I don't, I don't know if we should. I mean, if you would sort all the teams and if you're not counting McLaren because of the entire thing, you're ending up with like, Ferrari and Aston as the lead, most impressive teams, technically. Uh, I mean, Aston and Ferrari, not, not V-Car or uh, Red Bull or uh, what is it called? Uh, Toros. <laughs> like. Yeah, there. Ah, uh, uh, so no, no cheeky points for me. Uh, but if it wasn't for Yuki, but <laughs> oh my. Oh my gosh. <laughs> this is the, the Aston's best weekend since whenever. And, uh, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Like, they've been finishing outside of points for, uh, for a while. Uh, <laughs> I feel like one point is a victory in such a race where you cannot even pick a. <laughs> okay, I guess I'm not taking this one. Uh, most impressive driver, uh, Ricardo unfortunately was screwed by the strategy, so we didn't really quite see the potential in the race. I probably should go to Piastra, I, I agree. Uh, he... Yeah. I, 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 did he? I, 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 yeah, I know he, he went into the gravel but with like one wheel uh, in the third sector, and I went always off track. The big moment, uh, which lost him a couple of seconds in the middle of the race, but other than that, uh, pretty much a faultless weekend. Like, he was the got a faster time in qualifying if you exclude the slipstream Lando got on this run, uh, from Max, which is ironic. <laughs> uh, Lando got a slipstream for, uh, for like tenth of a second, so Oscar should have been on pole. Like his lab was insane. We're gonna look at the onboard as well. Um, and turn one, he won the race there. There's nothing really much to say. Uh, apart when thinking about the strategy, it was not ha meant to happen at all. He actually was supposed to get a comfortable first win in Formula One, and it should get should should be the most impressive driver. Although Hamilton is a good child, uh, 
pressure just takes it because it's a it's it's a it's the vintax <laughs> you know uh, yeah so uh actual prediction uh <laughs> do you give me the point here honestly <laughs> like magnuson got announced that he's leaving formula one uh okay okay Okay. <laughs> I mean, I I'm like seven points behind. I, I don't know. Yeah, uh, yeah. Uh, we're actually six points behind. Well, with the one point five points behind. Uh, yeah. Uh, still a long way behind. Uh, <laughs> I mean. He's not bad if he doesn't qualify for the race. Like, you know, he has to have a seat to be banned from from the race, and unless unless he does something ridiculous like robs a bank <laughs> this week or tomorrow, he has to do it like today or tomorrow uh, in order to be banned from from spa. Better than that, you know, getting a point. Unfortunately, um, sorry to you. So, uh, okay, that's it. Uh, I actually outscored you for the first time since Miami, which is ridiculous. <laughs> oh yeah, uh, you've been on a good run. Uh, at least I was very close to getting points in, in some other categories when you think about it. But uh, so yeah, um, okay, that's summed it up. We have like fifteen minutes to do the <laughs> predictions video, so uh, we gotta hurry up. Okay. Uh, you're saying bye now? <laughs> Again? <laughs> okay, I, I, I feel like I bashed it in the outro, but I already beast everyone, so I guess, uh, okay, see you everyone. <laughs>